Welcome to Electron Online, and here in our next video, we're going to take a closer look at the S orbitals. Now, what are S orbitals? Well, S orbitals are the regions where electrons reside around the nucleus of an atom. And typically speaking, if we think about the nucleus right here being positively charged, there's a positive nucleus, and then we think about the orbits of the electrons going around the nucleus like that in regions, which we call S orbitals or S shells, we call them shells or regions, energy regions where the electron resides. And typically we think of them as being spherical regions, which is pretty well correct. The electron goes around the nucleus in various ways, and typically the, the location where the electron will reside as it goes around many, many trillions of times per second, forms kind of a spherical shell around the nucleus. And when it jumps up to the next energy level, let's say from the n equals 1 energy level to the n equals 2 energy level, it goes to a larger spherical shape. However, that's not exactly what is happening. I want to give you a little bit more information about that. So what I've drawn on the board here is a probability versus radius function for various s orbitals. So for the n equals 1 level, for the innermost energy level of the, uh, of the atom, you can see that there's only one region where the probability reaches a maximum and goes back to zero. And that, of course, that is the place where the Bohr radius is at. This would be the size of the hydrogen atom in its most fundamental energy state. But what happens when the electron jumps up to a higher energy state? For example, this one right here. So this is the n equals 2 energy state. So the electrons jump up to the next orbit. And sure enough, the highest probability of finding an electron at the second energy level is indeed a point that's four times the radius of the innermost energy level. But that's not the only place where you could potentially find the electron. Notice there's another little hump right here. And so what happens is at the next energy level, at the n equals 2 energy level, you find that there's basically two places where the electron can reside. There's one that it could be right here, and it could be right here at this radius. So the S orbital for the second energy level isn't just simply a single spherical shell. It's basically something that looks like this. It's an innermost shell where there's a small probability the electron will be there. And then there's an outermost shell like this where the much greater probability where the electron can reside. And that you can see by the relative height of these curves. This means much higher probability than this, but yes, there's a small probability for the electron to exist there. And so it's reasonable to assume that a small part of the time the electron will be there, and a larger amount of time the electron will be in at the larger radius. And so that then circumvents the innermost energy level, which would then fit right inside. And let me find a different color. Let's see if this works. So let's say that this here would be the s equal 1 orbital right there. That would be the, most, the, the lowest energy state. And then when it jumps to the higher energy state, it could reside there, and small part of the time it could reside at the much smaller portion of the s2 orbital. So this would be associated with the s2 orbital, or the 2s orbital, and this would be the 1s orbital. Now, what happens when the, when the electron net moves to the next higher energy state. So now it moves to the n equals 3 energy state. And again, of course, typically that radius is much greater. It will now be 9 times the original radius of the hydrogen atom. But again, just like before, there's actually two additional humps where, those are what we call probability humps, where the electron can actually exist. It can exist over here, it can exist, exist over there, and it can exist over there. So for the, for the third energy level, the s orbital isn't just a single spherical shape object or region where the electron can exist. It actually exists in a three-phase portion where you have the, the main place where the electron can exist at a distance of nine times the Bohr radius. But then you can see there's another region where there's some probability that it can exist somewhere around the three to four times the Bohr radius. And then there's another place where the electron can exist over there. So the S equal one shell, let's call it... Uh, Hmm, where should I draw it? I'll draw it over here. All right, so this is the n equals 1 region, and this would be the 1s shell. So that's the innermost energy level. There's a single shell of probability where the electron can exist. When it jumps to the next level, the n equals 2 level, the shell becomes now a two-part structure where the greatest probability of the existence of the electron is over here, and the smaller probability of existence for electron is over there. So you can see that the second energy level is not a single spherical shell, but two spherical shells belonging together. The third energy level, now we have a three shell system. So we have the outermost place at nine times the Bohr radius. 
where the electron is most likely to reside, but small amount of time it can be here or it can be here and so forth. For the next energy level, N equals 4, notice there is these three little humps before the main location will exist where the electron can exist. Now notice that it's not a simple first shell, second shell, third shell for the various energy levels. The, the structure of the s orbitals becomes more and more complicated as you go further and further out. So we have this single simple shell for the innermost energy level, a double shell system for the next level, a triple shell system for the third level, and a quadruple shell system and so forth as you go further and further out in the radius. The reason why that is so is we, if we take a look at the, the wave function and we square it to come up with the probability density function, notice for, for n equals 1, the probability density function just simply slopes off and becomes 0 as r gets large, so we just have a single region like that where the electron can exist. But for the probability density function for the n equals 2 level, for the next energy level, notice there is a double hump in the probability function. The double hump means that there is no probability the electron can exist here, no probability the electron can exist there, but it can exist here, there, and there, and therefore there is this two-region structure that, bec that becomes apparent when we are at the second energy level. In the third energy level, the probability function makes two of these humps and has two regions here where the existence is not possible as well as at a further distance out here and therefore you end up with a one, two, three part structure describing the region where the electron can exist. For the next energy level, n equals four, you notice you'll have one more hump like that, you'll have three regions where the electron cannot exist and so the structure becomes more and more complicated as the electron moves out from the nucleus. And that's how we find the structure and define the structure of the orbits, the s orbitals of the electron around the hydrogen atom based upon the Schrodinger equation and the probability density function. So hopefully that gives you a better picture of what those s orbitals look like.